in a world obsessed with Snapchat and Instagram filters where perfection is just a swipe away. Let's explore a sonnet that challenges the very essence of these beauty enhancements. Imagine a love that's so authentic that it refuses to be concealed behind this digital pixelated filters but celebrates love in its raw and unfiltered form. Buckle up for a refreshing take on love that does not conform to the glossy standards of the selfie era. Hello well-wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video, we are going to decode the line-by-line -line meaning and do a detailed analysis of Sonnet 130, also sometimes known as My Mistress's Eyes Are Nothing Like the Sun by William Shakespeare. So grab your virtual seats and let's begin. You must be wondering, what is a sonnet? A sonnet is a poetic form. It is a form of a poem that actually originated in Italy during the 13th century. Now, why is this a unique poem and why does it have a unique name? Because this poem has got fixed number of lines. That is, 14 lines are there in this poem. There is a specific rhyme scheme and a dis different rhythm that is there in the sonnet. Apart from that, the beauty of a sonnet lies in the fact that it can portray complex ideas, emotions, thoughts or narratives in a very concise and brief manner. Did you know there are two people who actually invented this poetic form of the sonnets? The first and foremost was Petrarch and then of course it is William Shakespeare. No reason indeed why we always refer to him as the Bard of Avon. It is because of this he experimented out there and here we are going to study his sonnet as well. Sonnet 130 talks about rejecting conventional or traditional way of defining beauty and expressing the true love by accepting the person as it is. Shakespeare's speaker over here emphasizes that his mistress is not beautiful in the sense of how people traditionally or conventionally think a woman to be beautiful yet he loves her sincerely for who she is and this sonnet challenges the artificial and exaggerated description that is often found in love poetry where poets portray love in an extremely beautiful light but instead what Shakespeare does over here is to present the beauty of the lady as it is and accepting her the way she is. Now let us start decoding the line by line meaning of the poem. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. So here the speaker begins by directly stating that the eyes of the mistress or the lover are not like the sun. Unlike the conventional way of describing a lover's eyes to the brilliance, the light, the radiance of the sun, over here the speaker is being straightforward, direct and talking about the very ordinary nature of the mistress's eyes. Just because you know you are a girl that doesn't mean that every girl on earth is going to have beautiful looking eyes that is not true and that is exactly what is being presented over here by Shakespeare. In the second line the speaker compares his mistress's lips to coral. Now coral is a precious vibrant red substance you can see a picture of it on your screen however he claims that coral is in reality much more redder and in comparison to that the color of the lover's lips is not as red as the coral. Next he goes on to say if snow be white why then her breasts are done that is the speaker questions the comparison that is made of his mistress's breasts to snow and asserting that they are not white in color but rather they are done. Now what is the meaning of done? 
it means that they are a dull grayish brown in color if hairs be wires black wires grow on her head so now he goes on to describe the hair generally you will see poets spending a lot of time in the poem describing the hair of women over here he continues with the realistic portrayal saying that the hair of the mistress are like black wires rejecting the usual description that we find of the hair of women being flowing like the golden locks on the temples of the face all those descriptions are not there he is presenting the beauty of the woman as it is next he says i have seen roses damasked red and white but no such roses see i in her cheeks Shakespeare's speaker acknowledges having seen roses in reality which are red and white in color but he asserts that his mistress's cheeks do not show that same colorful beauty generally all those women out there who apply makeup we apply blush on our faces on our cheeks rather to give it a tinted look you also have these tinted balm and what not has come out today in the market related to the beauty products so he is over here saying that there are some women who are born with this natural beauty where their cheeks have a tint of red on their faces but over here the speaker reaffirms that his mistress's cheeks do not have that rosy color which is typically associated with beauty and in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks that is the speaker acknowledges that there are some perfumes which are very delightful when you take the fragrance of it that is some women they have a very nice pleasant smell or a fragrance which is you know exhibited but over here the speaker uses a strong word reeks to describe the scent of his mistress's breath which is further emphasizing that you are not always going to smell good so you can imagine in how raw form he is describing the beauty of his beloved I love to hear her speak yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound so despite the physical shortcomings that have been described by the speaker he now goes on to express his genuine love and affection for his mistress especially when she speaks or talks he tells that music may have a more ple- pleasing sound than the voice of the mistress but he still values the speech of the mistress for its authenticity now you will see there are some people who try to you know put up an appearance they will try to be fake in the way they are talking in the way they are you know trying to build purposely try to talk in a way that you know they please others but over here he tells that it is not just he who's describing the mistress as it is without adding his own touch of extra beauty that society expects out of a woman but at the same time the mistress also is very raw she is very organic she is just the way she is she does not try to add anything extra when she is talking and that is exactly what he has fallen in love for that she is as it is she is not fake in any way i grant i never saw a goddess go my mistress when she walks treads on the ground so he is acknowledging that he has never even seen a goddess walking in the way in which the mistress walks he dispels any idealized images of divine beauty the speaker concludes by emphasizing that the earthly and human nature of his mistress that she is very grounded as a person she is not very superfluous she doesn't show off too much she is a very simple ordinary person and it is this simplicity for which the speaker has fallen in love with his mistress and what does the speaker say in the final couplet and yet by heaven i think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare that is here the speaker declares that despite lacking the traditional conventional beauty his love for his mistress is 
utterly rare and genuine she may not be the most beautiful woman on earth but because he has been able to resonate with her he has been able to feel that sense of belonging for her he has felt a genuine love for her the poem closes with a powerful statement suggesting that his love is as valuable as any love which is idealized through exaggerated comparisons in traditional poetry that is people generally in poems they try to you know add an extra touch and extra flavor by you know describing a person not in the way it is now i'll tell you a better way of understanding this is how many of you make use of instagram snapchat filters when you are like clicking pictures that is okay that gives you your sense of satisfaction and trust me you have all the right in the world to look beautiful to look handsome right but that is what in this poem or in this sonnet the speaker is against he's saying that neither him nor the mistress they are not you know attracted to these outward fanciful notions of beauty they both accept each other the way they are they don't put on any filters or any extra beauty um, you know products to look beautiful but there is a genuine heart to heart connection that has been felt by both of them and that has led to him falling in love with her to discuss the themes firstly the poem challenges the idealized and exaggerated conventions of love poetry nearly all love poems try to portray the lover in a way that she or he is not but this poem or this sonnet presents a more realistic and a more honest view of love Sonnet 130 also rejects the traditional standards of beauty and challenges the cliché comparisons which are often used in love poetry okay and that is why he says my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun so he is rejecting that comparison that others make of comparing the eyes the beauty to sun and other elements of nature he's saying it's nowhere close to the beauty of the sun and yet i find my mistress to look beautiful so therefore we can say that the speaker values authenticity genuineness of his mistress's love and beauty over the artificial and exaggerated descriptions which are often found in other conventional love poems so we can say that sonnet 130 by shakespeare stand outs for being unconventional through its honest and realistic portrayal of the speaker's mistress the poem challenges the conventional beauty standards and presents a sincere form of love that is beyond superficial or outward appearances so that's it from this video i hope you liked it do hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more such future updates thank you for watching bye